how Shell went from importing oriental shells to a trillion dollar oil giant. From importing oriental shells as an antique shop owner to becoming the world's largest and most innovative energy company, this is the story of one of the most prestigious oil companies. In today's video, we will look at how Shell went from selling oriental seashells to becoming a major oil company. So watch this video to the end to find out and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. All dreams are valid, except if you don't believe in them. The dreams of Marcus Samuel Sr. were valid and he believed in them. Hence, Shell became successful today. We all know there is no success story without a beginning and that of Shell isn't any different. It all began in 1833 when Samuel Sr. decided to expand his London business where he previously sold antiques. As a renowned businessman, Samuel knew for sure that the only reason to remain competitive was to diversify, to make more sales. Hence, the idea of selling oriental seashells was born out of nowhere. Luckily for Samuel Sr., his business ideas boomed when the interior design industry was beginning to gain popularity. That helped Samuel Sr. gain his ground as demand for his seashells skyrocketed and he began importing shells from the Far East. Coincidence? I don't think so. While Samuel Sr. was polishing his new business idea, he was also unknowingly laying the foundations for an import-export business that would become the largest energy company in the world. Samuel Sr.'s business plans were cut short after he died in 1870. Does that mean the end of his business? Well, no. Samuel Sr. before his death passed the business to his two sons and hence another business cycle started. Later in this video, we will tell you how Samuel Sr.'s sons helped make Shell the big company it is today. So keep watching! Samuel Sr.'s two sons, Marcus Jr. and Samuel Samuel, started where their father stopped and began expanding the business. In the 1880s, the two brothers started weighing their options for oil exportation since their business was already in the same import and export industry. However, shipping wasn't as easy as they thought. Oil could leak. And that alone can cause lawsuits, as that would mean endangering the lives of aquatic animals. But there is no problem without a solution, right? The two brothers commissioned a fleet of steamers to carry oil in bulk, including the Murex, which in 1892 became the first oil tanker to pass through the Suez Canal. With the brothers' ideas, they achieved a revolution in oil transport. The primary aim of the voyage was to cut the cost of oil by enormously increasing the volume that could be carried and that paid off. There is that saying that you learn from your competitors. Marcus and Samuel did the same. At the time, their main competitor was Standard Oil, a company known for its popular blue can of kerosene. To give room for brand identification, the brothers made their cans bright red and tagged it the Shell brand. Their branding made sales surge as they started recording more profit from kerosene sales than their other businesses. This is not the whole story. It is even going to get crazier. Keep watching! After recording a major success and edging their competitor, the two brothers renamed their company the Shell Transport and Trading Company. They launched their first refinery at Balikpapan in Dutch Borneo before it was destroyed when the United States declared war on Japan. The two brothers went on to pull another massive deal in 1901 when oil was discovered in Texas. However, by 1902, overproduction in Texas had slashed the available supply to virtually nothing. At the same time, a smaller competitor called Royal Dutch had begun to construct its own tankers and set up its own sales organization in Asia. This meant trouble for the Shell brothers, as half of their fleet sat idle on the harbor. To tackle the issue, a decision was taken to merge Shell Transport and Trading Company with Royal Dutch Shell Group in 1907. The merger with Royal Dutch signaled a period of rapid expansion as the group's name quickly became shortened to Shell. They opened operations throughout Europe and in many parts of Asia. There was also substantial exploration and production in Russia, Romania, Venezuela, Mexico, and the United States. As if the business moving at a fast pace wasn't enough, the years that followed also gave Shell many exciting opportunities to demonstrate its product's quality in the fast-developing gasoline market. These included record-breaking races, flights, and journeys of exploration. Then World War I started, 
and Shell acted as a crucial part to the Allies in both world wars. During these wars, Shell became the British Army's main fuel supplier and offered all of its ships to the British Admiralty, including the Murex. Shell used the war era as a time of rapid expansion, since the gasoline demand increased drastically. They fueled the first transatlantic flight, made by Alcock and Brown in 1919, developed new and improved drilling techniques, and in 1929, founded Shell Chemicals to advance the refinement of chemicals from oil. The immediate post-war years were tough for Shell. Reconstruction was very expensive, and the oil market was changing rapidly. Against this backdrop, Shell launched new exploration programs in Africa and South America, and built new refineries in the United Kingdom. In 1947, the first commercially viable offshore well was drilled in the Gulf of Mexico, and within eight years, the company had over 300 oil wells. New discoveries were also made in Borneo and Niger Delta, Nigeria. Shell started the 1960s on the bright side by strengthening its presence in the Middle East, Yabal Oman. The discovery was Oman's first and would go on to transform Oman's economy, boosting Shell's profile as well. The Groningen gas field in the Netherlands was also discovered at the start of the decade, followed by the discovery of gas in the North Sea. The 1960s was indeed a golden period of research for Shell, hence the company also decided to internationalize. It placed local people in top positions to make the most of homegrown talent in each country. Wait a minute, this is not everything. Later in the video, we will show you how Shell was able to develop more offshore projects to increase its revenue. The 1960s almost ended on a good note, but instability in the Middle East led to a quadrupling of oil prices and meant that the era of cheap energy came to an end. In response, Shell began to diversify into coal, nuclear power, and metals. Shell also started looking beyond the traditional oil-producing countries for supplies and stepped up exploration in the North Sea and the United States. Fast forward to the 1980s, the oil price collapsed, with the price of a barrel of oil falling from $31 to $10, a massive downfall. But Shell adopted a new method and started growing with acquisitions. They started focusing on developing projects cheaply, leading to improved drilling techniques and 3D seismic technology to search for new oil sources. With this development, Shell was able to develop offshore projects in much more challenging environments. In 2005, the Royal Dutch Shell Group underwent a major structural reorganization as the nearly century-old partnership between the Royal Dutch Petroleum and Shell Transport and Trading was dissolved. Shell unified its corporate structure under a single new holding company, Royal Dutch Shell PLC. After the reorganization, Shell continued to expand and keep acquiring other businesses to diversify its portfolio. In 2015, Shell acquired BG Group, an oil and gas production company, for an undisclosed amount of money. In 2016, the company also created its new energies business to explore and develop commercial opportunities in renewable energy. With over 180 years of history, Shell is the world's greatest energy company, making over $200 billion annually. Although the company is far away from controversies, no company is. But Shell starting from scratch to become a trillion-dollar company is worth emulating.